Sam, your your other Sam says that this is the hardest job he's ever had. Is it the same thing for you or is he just lazy? Oh, no, absolutely. Well, you know, that's to be seen. But <laughs> um, it is absolutely it's it's a tough job. It's it's hard. I mean, a show like this, like. There isn't a moment that we're not on. It's but that's a testament to the show. You know, the fact that there is literally not a moment that doesn't keep the audience engaged and laughing. Uh, there's like a, a joke every second, you know, it, to the point that like it's a show that you got to see multiple times in order to get everything. Because you see it once and you're laughing at one joke and so you miss the next one. So you got to watch it so that you can not laugh at that one so you can get this one so that you can miss this one so you can get that one and so on. You were um, a fan though for, for a long time and you wanted to get in the show for a long time. Oh, Talk absolutely. about that process. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, I, I've i always been, you know, a fan of South Park and, and a fan of this show. It's ever since it came out, I mean, it was one of those shows that I love listening to the music. I hadn't seen it, uh, you know, for a long time after it came out until probably like 2020, I hadn't actually seen it live, but I listened to this, to the cast recording, you know, hundreds of times and people had been telling me like, oh, this would be such a great part for you. And I listened and <laughs> thankfully so did they, you know, I, it was, um, it was about like a three year process for me. Wow. Uh, getting the job. Cause it was, um, I auditioned once uh, at a round of auditions they were holding that I wasn't even invited to. It was like a closed, it wasn't an open call, but my friend had an appointment. Uh, and so he sent me all the music and the sides and stuff and said, you know, just show up. Maybe they'll see you. And they did. And so that got me in their sights. And then when they were looking for someone for the Broadway company, at one point I went in again and I got pretty far then. And, you know, obviously it didn't work out, but that's okay because then the next time I auditioned for this and I got it. And, you know, about a year and a half later, here I am. Third time's the charm, right? Absolutely. You do they expect you to do things like Josh Gad? Do they want that, or do they say no? Don't do anything like that because you know we've already we've seen that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's 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 interesting. There's there's certain things that are sort of universally just sort of built in. Whether it be, whether it was something that Josh Gad himself came up with or something that you know the directors and creative team came up with. That is just sort of, yeah, you got to do this this way or you got to say this like this. But the vast majority of things, something that I really appreciate about this show and this role is that I get to make it my own, is that I get to, you know, this is my version of Elder Cunningham. You know, in the way that Cody, who's currently on Broadway, it's his version and Josh Gad, it was his version. It's we all have our own unique versions of the show and that's that makes it really special for me you know obviously there's things we have in common in our performance just because what's funny is funny and so you do what's funny and but, then you do your, your big ben platt version right isn't that right a... and ben platt as well i mean his version is totally different from theirs as well it's is yeah. there is there a point where you go oh no no, we're getting to this point and I'm just tired. I can't do it. I mean, is it really exhausting? And how do you get that energy up before the show? It's exhausting, but you know, when I'm when I'm in the show, there's no point at which I'm really like, oh, I'm dreading this moment. Cause, you know, it's either it's either a moment that I get to be on and have a good time doing what I'm doing, or it's a moment where if I don't have to be on. I just get to sort of chill. Like I, I, you know, I'm still always engaged in what we're doing, but when there are moments that I am not one of, if not the focal point, you know, I get to like have a moment to just sort of watch, which for me is fun because 
it's fun to watch everyone else make different choices and do things every night, you know, cause like there's still things in this show with how hilarious it is. I still laugh at things a, a lot of times. And watch the audience. Right. And the you know, so to the audience and see how they're liking it. And yeah. Has your family seen you in it? And what they say? Absolutely. Yeah. My, my family, as well as, my whole extended family, we call them, uh, friends and family, uh, came to our opening week a year and a half ago when we opened in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, and, you know, they love it. My parents have seen the show probably, I think, like 16 times at this oh, point. Wow. wow. They're, cra they're crazy. Um, but, yeah, they've come out a bunch. Every time there's like a large grouping of people a family or something or friends, they will come out to go with them. Do they say that you're like Elder Cunningham or do they say, wow, we didn't see that in you? Oh, no, they, they, <laughs> they see it. I see it in me. Do you, do you ever like say to him, you know, this is too much. He's, he's like, uh, settle down. You know what I mean? With Yeah. I mean, you know, he, um, I, Elder Cunningham and I are are very similar. We have we have a lot of things in common, which makes it easy to play because I can get into it so well because I it feels like me. I like to think that I have you know some better social graces, <laughs> but um you know all in all like I he is and I am a a fun loving you know sort of carefree most of the time person who sometimes could use a bit more of a filter when I say things, but you know, I'm I, everything that I say comes from the heart. Um, and you know, I never mean anything maliciously, even if my phrasing is bad. And I know in the, in the original Josh got to do a lot of ad libbing with, um, your co-star's name. Mm-hmm. Is that still possible or do they give you, these are the ones, these are the names you have to use to refer to her. So there is, there's a couple that I, that are, are written in. There's a few that are, you know, like that's, that's what's in the script. You should say that one. But then there's also a short list of ones in, in certain spots that I can sort of ad lib. I can choose which one, you know, depending on how I'm feeling, depending on where we are, you know, some audiences, if there's a word that fits the criteria for the name uh, and also fits the area we're in, then I can say that. So I'm trying to think like when we were in Denver, it was right around the time that the Denver Nuggets had won the NBA championship and Nikola Jokic uh, was the MVP of all of the NBA at the time. So of course I, you had to use it, right? I called her Nikola Jokic and they loved it. I mean, yeah. I that would be fun. I think that'd be a fun part of the whole thing. On your resume, it says you do snapping, but what is snapping? Am I really stupid? I, I could snap. I what? oh it's finger snapping. Literally just snapping. <laughs> is that is that a highly sought uh skill? I don't know, but if it is, I can do it. <laughs> you are so there. Well, how long do you think you'll be with this show? Because you could look at Cody's been with this show forever. Um, and could he please leave so others could have the shot on Broadway, right? Uh, you um, know, I, I, I love here. Cody. I'm, I'm very happy for him. And as long as he wants to do the show, he should. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love this show. I think it's so much fun to do. And it's such a it's such a good show. Like it's, it's, it's so well written and the music is fantastic and audiences love it. And we love doing it. And it's just, there's like no downside to doing this show. So I, I would, I would keep doing it for as long as they let me. Honestly, I, it's one of those things like, have you thought about what other roles you want to play? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've thought about that and and obviously if and when there are opportunities to do other things I wouldn't be 100% opposed. I mean it's it's sort of a thing of uh 
if there's time in between times that I'm doing this show, then I would do something else. But I, I love doing this show. And, but I also know that now that I've done this, I'm sort of, you know, if they need me ever, if at any point I'm not doing the show, I'm always here. And they know that, that I am a go-to for if they need someone to come to the show. When you were in college, what they talk, I mean, because this seems like some, one of those kind of very like, oh my God, I can't believe it things where you can get a part right away out of school. Whereas most people, when they're in school, it's like, well, you might have to wait for a while because you're not old enough for the part or you don't fit the part or whatever. But this is like right out of the shoot. And how, how do they prepare you for that? You know, it was a lot of, a lot of trial and error, a lot of trial by fire. It was um, when when we first started, I, you know, I I won't lie and say that I had like the easiest time when we first started in rehearsals and when we got on the road, it was, it was definitely, there was a learning curve, especially, you know, leading the show, a, a role as intense as this one that even my spoken lines are very loud and you know, sometimes I'm screaming. <laughs> it was definitely something that I had to sort of, it took some time for me to really get a handle on. Um, especially coming right out of school. I mean, you know, that's, it's crazy. It's, I, I'm so lucky to have, you know, have the perfect sort of opportunity come my way right as I was out of school as I did. It was great. Um, but yeah, it was it was a challenge, but it, it was a challenge that I was welcome to take on and I'm happy that I did and I'm I'm all the better for it, I think. And I like to think that the show is in in good shape and in hopefully good hands. <laughs> what is the touring world like? Is that a real shift? Do you have to do touring is is very it's very interesting. I mean, it's it's like, it's sort of, it becomes your whole life. I mean, it sort of has to, you know, I'm, I'm originally from New York and I have an apartment in the city with my partner. And I, apart from going to sleepaway camp before touring, I'd never been away from home for more than like two months at a time. I've now been away from home for half a year at a time. And over the past year and a half, I've spent about like, three months total in my apartment. Oh, wow. Wow. And so it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's, it's very interesting to, to be in sort of like this bubble of a world with, with these people and with this cast and the show. And it's like pretty much all you think about while you're here. Um, but so I mean, how, like, do you, how do you make it home on the road? Is it, like you bring three things with and put them up in the room and you say, well, now that's home. That's it. I, I bring a lot of things. <laughs> I, um, I'm, I, I travel heavy. <laughs> I have, and I buy, right? <laughs> yes. And then I buy, I, that's how I do it. I make it feel like home by surrounding myself with all my knickknacks and tchotchkes that I love. Um, I've got a stuffed animal polar bear that I travel with me. I travel lots of video games. I've got my Nintendo Switch, my PS5, which I travel in like a big, you know, Pelican carrying case that I need to open every time we go through security. Um, I've got my N64, a Game Boy. You are uh, prepared. Got, You've got it one all. One of my suitcases is filled majority with board games. Jeez. What advice would you give somebody who is then going on their first tour? Um, I think I think the biggest thing to know is that like it's touring is not it's not a glamorous life. It's not. It's you know you're living out of hotels, some of which are not particularly nice, um, and you're living out of a suitcase. It's but at the same time, like, soak up every second of it. Explore the places that you're going and and just 
take every moment, everything that comes to you as an opportunity to to explore and grow and and meet new people and make new friends with the people in your company and people that you meet in the cities and just enjoy every second of it. You know, do your best to enjoy it. And you will. And you will. Uh, do you want to do it again? Do you want to do more tours? Or do you say, eh, maybe now I should be sitting still for a while? It depends on the show. I definitely, if I were to do, you know, a different show, another tour, I would probably want a, a bit of a, a pause before I were to move on to that, just so that I can have some time back home. Sure. But I wouldn't be opposed to it. I mean, you know, I... I Love doing theater. It's, Did yeah. you take take anything that you shouldn't have? Was there something that you said, you know, this was really stupid. I shouldn't have packed this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that Pretty is? My N64 specifically. Oh, so, all right, there you go. Well, no, I'm, that's like, I, I'm traveling a, a video game console that at this point I could like make decent money selling. And it's just sort of in my suitcase cushioned by all my sweaters the highest bidder that's what i'd be doing next next stop <laughs> unload it make the money you're in good shape well sam thank you so much this has been lots of fun i'm dying to see you in the show so you you be really good the night that i'm there the I rest plan of them, phone it in i'm fine with that <laughs> all right all right well thank you very much this is great thanks